Uh, now I would like to call uh, Gary for a special announcement. Hallelujah. That was good praise and worship time, wasn't it? Hallelujah. I love that song uh, talking about the Holy of Holies and how we enter into the Holy of Holies. And you know, it's just that. It really is. We have to enter, how? By faith. In the Old Testament, the priests were the only ones at a certain time that could bring the blood of an animal in for the sacrifice of the sins of the people. And they did it out of fear in a way that was very reverent and respectful because if they didn't, they would die. <laughs> we, you see that in the Old Testament, that it was, a, it was a very, very serious thing. And you know what's the beauty of this? We get to enter the Holy of Holies by faith. Yeah. Not out of fear. We do enter by fear. But it's the fear of the Lord, which is a reverence and a respect and an honor. They entered by fear of, if I don't do this right, I could drop dead. The priests, the common people like you and me, could not even enter that area. And we can by faith. That's a beautiful thing. I love it. The Bible says that everything is to be done with decency and order. And our attempt is to do just that. And Jesus, the Bible says, did everything in excellence. If we all looked at our lives and, and, and really took an inventory, we could all use improvement. Amen? I mean, I'll put two hands up, you know. So, it's not a condemning thing, but it's just something that, that we need to work on. We need to constantly be looking at improving ourselves and how we do things and how things are done, and, and even in the church. So we've come up with an idea that if a person comes in while the ministry of the word is going on, so that would mean that they entered late, okay? We're not condemning anyone. There's people, hey, I've had things happen in the morning that delayed me and, you know, I mean, so it's not a condemning thing if you came in late. If it's just a habitual thing, which I've been there too, um, it's just a decision to, to make a little adjustment and things can be changed. Amen? So what we're going to do here is you may have seen that the chairs that were on this side of the auditorium in the back were all blanketed and reserved and everything. And what we're doing is we're setting those chairs aside to respect you and respect also the ministry of the word. Okay, and how we're doing that is if someone comes in while the ministry of the word, and that's really where we're starting, the praise and worship is the ministry from us to God. That's very important too. So I want you to just keep in mind that when you come in during praise and worship, if it's already begun, be very respectful. And the Bible says, those that honor me, I will honor. That's, that's the God's word, okay? And as we honor him during praise and worship, be respectful if you have to come in and, and, and you know, excuse me and move and stuff, because really, we're taking away the attention from a person and we're taking away the person with God and also the honoring of God through praise and worship. And, and we don't want to do that. We really don't. I know everybody's heart is to respect others and, and honor God. But sometimes we have to keep that in the forefront of our thinking. And so what we're doing is we're, we've set aside some chairs so that when the ministry of the word is going on and beginning, um, 
people that may come in at that point will be seated back there. So really what I'm asking is those chairs that we set aside and reserve in, the, in this back section, please don't sit in them before the ministry of the word um, because that's what they're set aside to do is to respect and honor you and respect and honor the Lord. Amen? Amen. And I think we can all get on board with that and... Uh, and it's not a condemning thing if you came in late or whatever. I mean, uh, you probably should look at that, but, uh, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. God is good, amen? amen. So uh, that's what our new policy is going to be, is that you'd be seated in those back sections. Amen? amen. All right, thank you. God is good, amen? amen? And he always will be good. Why? Because he's God. It's in his nature to be good. Uh, every usher that's here in the room, would you please stand up? Every usher, will you please stand up? Every usher that's in this room, stand up if you would, please. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four, five. If you're not ushering today, but you do usher, please stand up. I want to I pray for you. Any ushers that we have here, just stand up. I'll remain standing for just a moment. We have some in the back. We have some up front here. I want to tell you, when I direct a, something from the pulpit, I'm not beating the ushers up. I'm trying to give you authority to handle situations that are happening. Uh, so, so we love you guys. We thank God for you guys. Without you, we could have disruptions in the service. Without you, there could be problems that would happen. So I thank God for you. Uh, you are a very valuable part of us. And so, I, I, yes, uh, if we see something, we'll bring it up. But we're thankful that you're there to handle it. Give these guys a hand and these ladies a hand clap. God bless you. Now let's pray for them. Let's pray for them because it's hard. It's hard when somebody comes in and it causes a problem. These are the individuals and ladies that have to handle it. These are the ones that have to talk to people who say, you don't have a right to talk to me. These are the ones that are trying to help bring order, like Gary was up here talking about a little bit ago, uh, ha have things done decently in order. And these guys sometimes, sometimes take the blunt of it. So why don't you just stretch your hands out to your friendly ushers and usherettes. And let's make sure we give them respect. When they ask us, please listen to them. But let's bless them right now. Father, we speak your blessing into each one of these that are ushers and usherettes, those that work for you and try to keep order in a service, and those that you to try to help uh, so your Holy Spirit can move without any disruption. We ask you to bless them, bless them, bless them, encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. And Heavenly Father, help them, help them, help them do what you'd have them to do. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. Go ahead and be seated. God is good. Amen. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Uh, the, the one who takes the attendance on our services told me that last Wednesday, in our Wednesday service, it was the largest attendance that we've ever had over in that building. Give God a hand clap. God is doing a work, and I believe we're growing. I believe, we've said it before, that what was going to happen is God was going to bring people into the church that we had never seen before, and we see some that we've never seen before, but now we see them all the time, and we thank God for them. There's more coming. God's going to grow us. Some have said the wrong thing. The Bible says you can have what you said, or you say, with your mouth, and they've said, well, you know, when churches go through changing buildings and moving around and uh, you know, they lose attendance. And we said from the beginning, that's not going to happen. We're going to gain, we're going to gain, we're going to gain in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to gain. And, and the important thing is to always give God honor. It's not about us anyway. It's all about Him. It's, it's about worshiping Him. Today I want to talk to you about something that is very near and dear to my heart and important. Uh, you go through life, you try to figure things out. When we first start out, you might think, well, this is kind of a simple thing, but it's really not. Love. Love. This thing called love, it strengthens your faith. Love will strengthen your faith, and strong faith will help you through tough times. Remember, love will strengthen your faith, and strong faith helps you through tough times. In fact, if we really look at the Word of God, which we ought to, we could and should say it this way, love strengthens faith, and strong faith gives you victory over tough times. The reason we say that is because in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, it says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
Faith overcomes the problems that attack you in this world. If there's a problem that you have that you're facing, number one, it's in this world right now, and faith is what gives you the victory over that situation. Amen? Amen. So when we say this, love will strengthen your faith, and strong faith will give you victory over the situations that are coming against you in this life. And it's very important. The next thing I want to say, though, is possibly the basis and the the foundation of everything we're going to say after this. And it's found over in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18. It says this, there is no fear in love. Remember this, there's two opposing forces that try to attack us, fear and faith comes and tries to help you. Fear tries to attack you, faith tries to help you. So there's two opposing forces that are active in our lives. A fear trying to get us not to believe God, to not trust God, to not walk with God, to not claim God's word. And then faith saying, believe God, trust God, claim God's word in your life. So you have fear and you have faith. Now watch. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear has torment. Have you ever gone through something you're worried about? You stay up all night. You're worried and you're worried and you're worried. You pace the floor back and forth. You go to work. You can't think clearly. You you go to a family function. You can't think clearly. Possibly you're here today. And that worry is on you and trying to beat you up. Uh, Please listen to the word of God today. Because perfect love or the love of God will cast out that fear. And, And it says here, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Again, what we're finding out is when love comes in, fear leaves. When love comes in, you're able to say goodbye to fear and hello to faith working more in your life. Now remember, love strengthens faith. And strong faith overcomes or gives you victory over tough times. The Bible tells us that God himself is love. The Bible makes it very clear, there's no question about it, that God himself is love. It says it this way in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Now watch. God is love. Love strengthens our faith. God is love. Love casteth out fear. God is love. Love strengthens our faith. And strong faith gives you victory over challenging times. Time with God is time with love. When you and I spend time with God, remember God is love. Perfect love casts out fear. Love will strengthen your faith. And time with God, the loving God, the Bible tells us about, that loving God, as you spend time with him, fear will start to leave. As you spend time with a loving God, faith will start to rise up in your heart. That's just a way that faith will be strengthened as you and I spend time with Almighty God. That's why the Word of God is so important. That's why we need to spend time in the Word of God. Do you know what the Word of God is? And I've said this for a long time, and, and, and I've heard others say it, and maybe I learned it from someone else when I was in school. I don't know. Maybe in life I heard it. Maybe all the sermons I heard from other people uh, was telling me this. I don't know. You know, sometimes you say something, you're not sure where it came from, but you know it's in line with the Word of God. And, and so this is w- what I really believe is the Bible is a love letter. I believe the the Bible is a love letter. It talks about how God loves people. In the Bible, if you'll notice, it talks about his love for David. He says, not only did he love David, but David loved him. He said, there's never been a man like this man. He's a man after my own heart. He wants to have a love relationship with Almighty God. He says, I love this David. And, and, And another one, we see his love for Daniel. How much he loved Daniel. He loved Daniel, loved to be with God. He would take time and be with God, and he would not allow anybody to stop him from having a love relationship with Almighty God. Love strengthens your faith. Isn't it interesting David had strong faith? Isn't it interesting Daniel, who would not allow others to stop him to have a love relationship with God, had strong faith? Moses had a great love ship with God, and God loved him. But the thing that really hits us in the Bible, now now, please listen. He said, God not only loved David, 
Not only does the Bible tell us his love that he had for Daniel, not only does the Bible tell us of the great love that God had for Moses, but God tells us of the love he has for you and for me. The Bible is a love letter. And as we read the love letter, love grows on the inside of us. And love will strengthen our faith. And strong faith will help us have victory or overcome or get through tough times. Strong faith gets you through or gives you victory during tough times. You know, the Bible talks about this David guy. God loved David. And David would spend time with God. He had a relationship with God. He would let everything else be pushed out of his way, and he'd spend time with his father. He'd spend time with God. He would write songs and sing songs to God, and God loved that. And because of that, fear left David, and faith rose up. When he faced a giant, he wasn't scared. Everybody else was because they hadn't spent time with God with the love of God. So fear was in them. David had spent time with God, with the love of God. And perfect love casteth out fear, so he had greater faith than everyone else. He whipped a giant. Later on, David had to fight or face a king who didn't like him, a king who tried to kill him. But David had had this relationship and continued to have this love relationship with God. And love cast out fear. And so his faith was strong even though the king was trying to kill him. Later on, he faced enemies and he, he led the army to great victories. Even his own son came against him. But his love relationship with God sustained him. And he's continued to have great faith when others would have fallen. My friend, love strengthens our faith. And strong faith gives you victory, and helps you through tough times. Amen? You know, it wasn't just David. Also, Daniel, all those around him told Daniel that he was a loser. All those around Daniel made fun of him and said, you're silly worshiping your God. All those around him tried to put him down and put him in his place. But Daniel would not, Daniel would not allow others to stop him from worshiping his God. Daniel would not allow others to stop him from having a love relationship with God. How many times has your family or a friend or a work person or even sometimes the government seems to come against what we call Christianity and what we believe is having a great time with God? Don't let anybody stop you. Continue to have that love relationship with Almighty God because perfect love will cast out fear. When, you, when we allow our relatives or friends or government or others to start to tell us how, how to have a relationship with God, it will weaken in our faith. We can't allow that to happen. Daniel had the government telling him how he could pray. Daniel had the government telling him how he could worship God. Daniel had the government telling him what God he should worship. My friend, we're coming, the Bible tells us, into a day where the government will tell you, you can't even worship a God. I'm trying to say to us now, it's time to really worship God. Amen? Amen. And, the, and so the king threw Daniel in a lion's den. Here there's lions all around him. But he had this love relationship with God. He enjoyed the presence of God. Have we been spending time with God? Or have we been looking at the lions or the giants or those that are trying to attack us? Daniel continued to keep his eyes on God even when he was in the middle of the, of the lion's den. And God delivered him because Daniel's faith was strong because he had spent time with his God. Spending time with God is very important. God wants you to be with him. Faith, remember, strengthens. Your, uh, faith is strengthened by love, is what I mean to say. Faith even works by love. So faith to give us victory over the giants. Faith giving us victory over those that are telling us how to worship. It all, all faith gives us victory over that. You know, there's a story told about a couple. A couple started out their marriage. They were doing really good. They'd spend time together all the time. They, they, they made love. They made love even across the dinner table. Oh, even, oh, oh, you're so good. 
he would call and say, they're telling me to, to work overtime, and I can make more money if I work overtime. She said, oh, honey, I would miss you. Can't you come home? I'll make it worth your while if you come home. He's out of work. He's home. Hey, honey, how you doing? They spent time together, and guess what? They believed in each other. They had faith in each other. They didn't question each other. They had faith in each other because they spent time together. Time together equals being able to trust each other. Love. Loving each other. Showing love to each other brings trust You know, with God. If we don't spend time with God, if we don't spend time at home, alone by ourselves, worshiping God or talking to God, if we don't spend time reading the Bible, if we don't spend time coming to church, and thank God you're here today, you're doing the right thing, you really are. What you're saying to God right now is, I want to have a loving relationship with you. And I know, God, that love will strengthen my faith. And strong faith is needed to have victory over tough times. So, so we need to spend time with God. If we don't spend time with God, if God calls and we don't cancel everything else and run to where God's at or, or shut ourselves off. I remember reading after a man of God that said several times he would be at family functions and he'd feel an unction, an unction in his heart that God was calling him aside. And he would excuse himself from the dinner table and go into the room and shut the door and spend time with his God. You don't have to do that all the time. But there are times when God might say, I need you. Come spend some time with me. Now, what's interesting about it, anytime God would say that to you or me, it sounds like he's saying he needs us. What he's really saying is you're about ready to face something and you need me. Come spend some time with me. Love on me and let me love on you because love will strengthen your faith and faith, strong faith is needed to have victory over tough times. So let's spend time with God. When God calls you to come to church, don't allow the other things to say, oh, it's not important that you come to church. God's saying, I want to have a loving relationship with you. We don't come to church to do God a favor. We come to church because God is doing us a favor. It, we're not building God stronger. God is trying to make us stronger. God's not going to face something so big and so tough that he can't handle, but you and I are going to face some things big and tough, and we need him in our lives so we can handle it. Amen? There's a couple, the same couple that was doing so good, all of a sudden things started happening. Remember I told you about the man and the wife. She'd call him at work. He'd run right home. Things started happening. They got busy. Have you ever got busy in your life? We get busy. Things start. We don't mean to not spend time with our wives or our husbands or somebody we love or a friend. But all of a sudden, things come up. And things came up in this couple's lives. It's their testimony. They talked about how things came up in their lives. He wasn't messing around. She wasn't messing around. But things kept coming up. And pretty soon, their love started to, to wind down. And their trust for each other started to break down. They didn't have faith that the other person was all right because the other person and them weren't together a lot. The other person wouldn't make the sacrifice to be with them. The other person would take the time to be with them. They're always too busy. I'm on the phone now. I can't talk to you. I have to run over here. I can't spend time with you. And it broke that marriage up. They look back and they say, when we first started out, it wouldn't matter what was happening. We'd always make time. Listen to me. Love strengthens our faith in each other. And with God. And strong faith is needed in marriage, relationships, and certainly needed with God. And needed for you and I in this life. What is calling you aside? What is telling you don't spend time with God? What is telling you uh, partying with your friends are more important than spending time with God? Uh, Doing this or doing that is more important. Getting that thing on sale, I'm going to miss service. Or I can't read the Bible. I can't spend time praying. They have a sale right now. I've got to get to, or that basketball game is more important, God. That football game is more important, God. That fishing engagement is more. What is it that's pulled you and I away? It can even be something nice and something good. But if it replaces our relationship with God, it's going to hurt us because love will strengthen our faith. Spending time with God will strengthen our faith. And we need strong faith in the world we live in today. We need strong faith. We need to have a love affair with Almighty God. Amen? We need to spend that time with Almighty God. Sundays are sacred. I'm spending time with my God. Wednesdays are sacred. 
I'm spending time with my God. I don't care if hell or high water comes along. I'm spending time with my God. I'm getting up in the morning, and I'm going to spend time. I'm going to have a loving relationship with God because love strengthens my faith and chases my fears away. Ah, yeah. oh, I can believe big now. I can believe strong now because now I trust God again because I've been spending time with my God. Turn to somebody and say, love strengthens faith. And then turn back, if you would please, if you would please, and, and seriously, if you please would turn back to them and say, spending time with God will strengthen your faith. <laughs> love Love will strengthen our faith. And strong faith is needed during tough times. There's no question about it. Jesus, when you study the life of Jesus, Jesus was victorious. Jesus was tempted like you and I. The Bible says in every way that you were tempted, that he was tempted. In every area that you are and I are tempted, the Bible says that Jesus is also tempted in the same way. I don't know about you, but I've been tempted at times to give up in, situ to give up in certain areas. I've been tempted to go another way instead of God's way. I would assume you have been too. I've been tempted to put my faith in something else other than God. And I would say that you've been tempted to give up at times. I would be so bold to say that if I've had that temptation in my life, that you must have had the temptation in your life to go another way other than God. I would say that you possibly have also faced the thing that you'd put your faith in something else. Now you say, well, that's a bold thing for you to say to me. Well, not only will I say that about you, but I'll say it about Jesus. You say, oh, no, Jesus, listen, the Bible says he was tempted. I'm not saying he fell for it, but Jesus was tempted to give up. Jesus is tempted by the devil to go another way. Jesus is tempted to put his faith in something else. But listen, Jesus had spent time with God. When God called, he was there. He didn't allow other things to get in the way. He'd go into the garden and pray. He'd go on a mountain and pray. He'd go into the desert and pray. He'd spend time with his God. He made sure that he had a loving relationship with Almighty God. And because he did, his faith was strong. His faith brought him victory. But I want you to listen to, and these are, we're going to have three points today on watching Jesus, the one who shows us how to spend time with God, how to push everything else out of the way. Jesus was busy. Think about this, if you would, please. Jesus was walking on this earth. Jesus understood that he was starting something that was going to change the whole world. He knew that what he was doing was going to touch people down through all the ages. And he knew what he was doing was going to change eternity forever. He knew what he was doing, what he was saying, what he was, what the actions he took, his life, everything about him. He knew that all of that was going to be analyzed and scrutinized, condemned or praised. He knew that what he did and everything he did was going to be looked at from for generation to generation to generation to generation. He understood that. He had a lot on his plate. So you could say this, he had a whole lot more on him than you and I have on us, but yet he made sure that he spent time along with God. He knew that he needed the love of God because love will strengthen my faith. He knew that. He knew that love will strengthen his faith and strong faith was needed for the tough times, the beating, the cursing, the mocking, the cross. He knew he would need the strength of God in him. He knew he needed faith in him. If Jesus needed that time, and Jesus shows, that you need to, shows us that you need to spend time with love, then we need it also. What you're doing may be very important, but whether it will change eternity, I'm not sure. Maybe if you witness to somebody for Jesus Christ and they give their heart to Jesus, you've changed their eternity. But Jesus changed all of our eternities. eternities. And if Jesus knew that he needed to spend time with God, with love, to strengthen his faith, by God, we need to also. Amen?
turn to someone and say, God loves you so much, he's calling you right now. Now, I mean that. I mean that. It's not a joke. I'm not trying to be funny. Seriously, listen. I do joke around. You probably never knew that. But this is an area I'm not joking about. Right now, the Holy Spirit, when I'm speaking, is touching your heart. And he's calling you to him. He really is. He truly is. I, I know the Holy Spirit. I know what he's doing. Now, what we can do is we can reject that. We can laugh at it. Or we can understand that God is trying to say something directly to you. He's trying to say to you, Nancy, he's trying to tell you, I need you. He's trying to say to you, Mahes, take some time away with me. He's trying to say to you, Gwen, spend some time with me. Quit playing kissy face with Calvin for five minutes and spend some time with me, will you please? Come with me, come with me. Spend some time with me. To pull away, Carol. Spend some time with me. Shut everything else off. I want to strengthen you because there may be something in front of you that you're going to need that strong faith for. Amen. Amen. He says, I want you, John. I want you, Mary. I want you, Gary. I want you, Leanne. I want you, Randy. I want you. I want you, Eric. I want you. I want you. Spend some time. Not a joke. Possibly the most important thing we've said. Take time when he calls. And he's calling you right now. If I know God and uh, he's allowed me to know him, if, I'm telling you, He's touching your heart. He's pulling your heart right now. He's saying what that man up there is saying with, with that microphone around his, and that tie around his, and, and that man is saying, he, he's not talking about himself at all. He's talking about me. And he's telling you that he loves you. He's calling you. He wants you, not for religion. He wants you to have this relationship. Come, spend time with God for just a few moments. Before we go any further and see what Jesus did and what he said, I'm going to ask you to just for a moment talk to God in your heart. There's only two things you can say. Yes, Father, I'll take that time. Or I'm busy. Call me later. I'm sorry, Father, for the times that you called me and I didn't listen. I now see why I didn't have the strong faith I needed for the challenge that came. I'm sorry, Father, for the times you called me to a service and I was too busy. I now see that I, you were trying to help me with the strength that I needed for the challenge I faced. I'm sorry, Lord. I know you love me. I love you. I thank you, Lord, that you want me to have a relationship with you. I thank you, Father God, that your love will strengthen me. It will strengthen you. I thank you, Father, that your love will strengthen my faith. I needed strong faith back then, and I didn't listen. And I know I'll need strong faith in the future. I'm listening. I'm spending time with you, Father. God is good. Why don't you look up at me if you would, please? God is good, isn't he? He really is. You know, the thing about God, this is how God is. Some parents take their child, and if they do something wrong, the parent will beat the child, beat the child, and beat the child, and then mock the child, mock the child, put the child down, talk to everybody else how bad their child is, how stupid their child is, how goofy their child is. God doesn't do that. God says, hey, you missed it, but I love you. You missed it, but I love you. And then he brags about you. God's cool, huh? Okay, let's listen to what Jesus has to say over in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. It says this, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, he had just spent some time with God, returned from uh, the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit unto the wilderness. 
And being 40 days tempted of the devil, one of the other gospels says 40 days he spent in the wilderness and then he was tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. He didn't take a blasted thing for food. And what they, when they were ended, he afterwards was hungry. Of 40 days he hadn't eaten anything. And the devil, uh, the Bible actually talks about the devil more than Preachers talk about the devil. Some are so afraid to talk about the devil. It amazes me that some people said, Pastor, you ought not talk about the devil. You'll give him glory. Uh, No. We need to talk about the devil like Jesus did and tell you that God's power is greater than the devil. Amen? Amen? People go out and worship the devil. People go do things for the devil. And in church, we can't talk about the devil. Listen, there is a devil. The Bible says he goes around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, but he may not devour you because the Bible says there is a devil. You have an adversary. He's the devil, the Bible says, but you have victory over the devil. Amen? It says, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they had ended and afterwards he was hungered, and the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is... Now watch what Jesus said. What Jesus said. What we're going to talk about today in the next few moments is something that people have wondered about for years. Rich people have tried to figure out how come they're not satisfied. Intelligent people try to figure out why they're not satisfied. They go to school over and over and over. They get degree after degree after degree, and yet they're not satisfied. Rich people have food all around them. Caterers come in, cooks, cooking whatever they want, and yet they're not satisfied. Why is that? Well, Jesus answers and he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So point one today is simply this. Not every need can be met with material things. Not every need that you and I have in our life can be met with material things. See, God loves you, and God wants to meet all your needs. But he understands you better than others understand you. Listen to what God knows about you. Over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your spirit. Everybody say spirit. And so, say so, so, and body, say body, be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that you and I are a spirit, that we have a soulish realm, which is our emotions, our intellect, and that we live in a body. So you and I are three parts. God can minister to all three parts. Amen? Jesus knew that, and that's why he said to the devil, Man cannot live by bread alone. Why? Because man is not just physical. Man is a spirit. He is a soul. He has emotional needs, intellectual needs. Man cannot eat by bread alone. You can eat bread and 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 eat bread bread until bread is coming out of your ears and you still will say, I'm not satisfied. There's something I'm missing in my life. There's something that's just not there. uh, A very wealthy man in his time was called Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes had all kinds of money, and they came to Howard Hughes, and they said, you just keep going for more and more and more and more. They said, "Uh, when will it be enough? He says, just a little bit more. That's how we are. See, we're a three-part being, and if we try to feed only one part of us, we'll always feel empty. It will never totally satisfy us. And so food will never totally satisfy you. Jesus says, man should not live by material things alone. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, I'm telling you now, you can feed your body and still your whole being, there'll be something missing. How about your soulish realm? Your soul, the Bible says you're a spirit, you live in a body. Your body, you can feed it and feed it and feed it and it still will lack, it still will want something. But how about your soulish realm, your intellect? Do you know you can feed your intellect and feed your intellect? We have people do that. We have people that go to college and learn things and learn things and learn things and learn things. They'll get one degree after another degree after another degree after another degree. I remember talking years ago to a friend of mine who's putting his child through school. He's an older man. And I said, how's it going with your child? He goes, he's a continuous student. 
I go, what do you mean? He's got a, a you know, BA in this, a BA in that, a master's in this, and a master's in that. And guess what? I said, what? He wants to go to school some more. I said, he wants to go to school some more because the kid was searching, searching, searching. He was feeding his soulish realm, his intellect, but it wasn't touching his spirit. You got it? Now, the, now the intellect, you can be a genius. There are people in this life that are considered geniuses. They know more than you and I know. They know more than you and I possibly will ever know. That Their minds are so sharp. They take in, they take in, they take in, and then they end their life in suicide because they never find the truth. They're confused and unhappy. Then you, the soulish realm is just not the intellect, though. So, so let's say you feed with knowledge and knowledge and knowledge, and you still feel empty. Or how about your soulish realm is also your emotions? So you find a relationship after relationship after relationship after relationship. You go here and you go there. You try a girl, you try a guy. You try this, you try that. Nothing seems to satisfy you. You try drugs, you try this drug and that drug. This will get you high, but then you come down. That'll get you high, and that'll take you down. This experience is a cool, man, but then it's bad again. I want to watch something on TV because it feeds my soulish emotional, but then it's over, and now I'm down. I'm still, something is lacking, my friend. You can feed your emotional soul all day long. You can feed your intellectual soulish realm all the time. You can feed your body all the time and still be hungry. Something is missing. Jesus said, hey, man shall not live by bread alone. Material things cannot meet all your needs. That's all he's saying. He's going, devil, you mess with me on the material level? I already know. That's for my body, for my soulish realm. But my spirit is hungry for something else. My spirit needs something to eat. I need God. Amen? That, and that is simply, and that is simply what Jesus is saying. He says, listen, now let me say this to you. This is important. God can meet all your needs. Physical, soulish, your intellect, your emotions, and your spirit. And he's the only entity there's ever existed that can take care of every part of you. God wants to meet all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. The second thing we find Jesus saying is simply this. And we need to hear this. Listen to me, anyone that's been searching for spiritual things. Point two, you can receive from the wrong spiritual source. You can receive from a wrong spiritual source. Jesus is going to say that, so let me read it to you. Over in Luke chapter 4, verse 5, it says, And the devil, taught, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of all of it, for that it is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will give it, if thou therefore shalt worship me, another spiritual source other than God, if you'll worship me, all shall be given thee. And Jesus answered, now watch what Jesus says. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You can receive from another spiritual source. But Jesus is saying, don't receive from him. The devil's offering him things, saying, look, I'm going to give you something. D Jesus, I've got a lot of this stuff I can give you. You know, the Bible says Satan is the God of this world, the little G God. That Satan has a lot of power. Now, over believers, we're in this world, but not of this world. We don't have to let him run us. But Satan is the God of this world. Why do you think it's, it's so goofy in this world? So Satan can offer you things. There are spirits that are uh, available for you. They'll come along and say, I'm going to bless you. I'll give you something if you'll just worship me. Do it my way. Do it my way. Do it my way. And I'll make you the greatest rock star. I'll make you the greatest uh, preacher. I'll make you the greatest this. Or I'll make you the greatest businessman. Just worship me. Worship me. Worship me. I remember years ago, I was, I was running uh, the stereo TV vacuum cleaner. Uh, 
uh, record department in Montgomery Ward in Elkhart, Indiana. And we had a vendor that would come in. He would sell us the records. He would go through all the records, and he would replace the ones with new ones and take out the old ones and all that. And he was there. He said, hey, I, I go, why? He says, I, I want you to look at this album. He goes, this is our number one album right now. And I honestly wish I could, rem- I, I think it may have been Kiss. I can't remember. And he said, see this album? I go, yeah. He goes, but it's number one. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He says, you want to play it a lot. I said, okay. So I took it, and I'm standing there, and I read the back of it. And I said, we weren't having success, but then we dedicated ourselves to the devil. And after we dedicated ourselves to the devil, we all of a sudden started really doing well. I read that. And I wasn't a Christian. But I had been around. And I knew my mom brought me to church all the time. Do you know that your your mom could take you to McDonald's, but you're not going to become a hamburger? Your dad can take you to the car dealer and you won't become a car. And you can bring your kid to church and they won't become a Christian. You need to pray over them. Pray over them. But that seed will be there and someday it will start to grow up. Amen? Amen? And I read that and I read it and it said, I said, oh my goodness. And that Christmas people were coming and saying, hey, could you give me that album? My son or my daughter wants this album. And I say, um, here it is, but read this first. <laughs> Seriously. And just... Normal people, not God, church people, as far as I know. They just read it and go, ooh, we don't want that. There's a movie used to be called, and I'm not swearing in church. I know Gary does, but I don't. An old movie my parents had us watch years ago called The Damn Yankees. It's about a man that wants the Yankees to win the World Series. So he makes a deal with the devil. You can receive from the wrong spiritual source. I'm talking to you right now. You can turn yourself over to the wrong spiritual source. And sometimes you don't know it's the other spiritual source. That's why I'm talking about it. So you can hear this, don't. Jesus says, no. I should serve the Lord my God and no other God should I follow. He's saying, Satan, get thou behind me. I'm not going to listen to you, but you and I at times have listened to the wrong source. You and I have received from the wrong source and then blamed God. No, it's you and I have been listening to the wrong source. We've opened our... Su- uh, we've got to stop it in Jesus' name. We've got to close the door on it in Jesus' name. This man, this man all of a sudden, this guy who would fall down and couldn't play baseball, he was overweight, all of a sudden, this guy could catch balls behind his back. Probably he catch. He could hit really good. This is this movie. He did really good. He was winning everything, and then the devil came. He says, "Time now to pay up." There's a day. It's called the pay up. The Bible calls it Judgment Day. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season, but then comes the judgment. In this movie, the man all of a sudden tries to work a deal and get out of this contract he's made with the devil because he's been receiving from the wrong spiritual source. Go to a church where they preach the B-I-B-L-E. Not everything that calls itself a church is a church of God. Not every, spirit, not every spirit that shows up in your living room or in your bedroom or in your car is the Spirit of God. You've got to say, I don't want any other spirit but the Spirit of God. I don't have to have any other spirit but the Spirit of God. Any other spirit, shut up and leave me alone. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to listen to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I only open myself up for the Spirit of God. Amen. I only so- Listen, we've got to be careful. Well, you know a mood is said. Who gives a flip about what he said? I give a hoot and a holler about what God said. Amen. But you know, I read this book, and um, what are you doing? Don't open yourself up to another spirit. Jesus says, no, you can receive from another God, but Satan, get thou behind me. I'm only going to worship the God of the Bible. Maybe you've been tempted. The Bible says in Psalm 1, he said, blessed is a man that doesn't take counsel from the ungodly. We, if we're not careful, we say, well, he's not the devil, but he may be a mouthpiece for the devil. Well, that guy on TV is such a nice guy. And what they're trying to say on TV, no, 
They don't even know it. They could be be used of the devil and telling you something that isn't right. Have you noticed the moral climate in the United States is totally different than what God would say? And people say, well, it's okay. What do you mean it's okay? We're being listening, we're starting to listen to another spirit. Get thou behind me. Any other spirit that goes against God's word, I'm listening to God. Jesus says, you can't receive from another spirit. And the last one. Oh, wait a minute. I want to give you a solution. Before we get to the last one, spend time with God. You won't get the other spirit. Spend time with God. You won't open yourself up. Do you know that if you spend time, say Gary and I hang around. And we, we talk to each other. We spend time together. We pray together. And then you, John, come and tell me something about Gary. I'll know that you're lying if you're telling me because I've been with him. I know him. I know his quality. I know his integrity. I know who he is. No, you can't do that because guess what? We don't have a weird love relationship, but we have a brotherly love relationship. And brotherly love increases our faith in each other. So when you bring something to me, I already know that's not true. Well, Patty, I know you for a long time. And so if, if John once again brought something against John, you are a troublemaker. If John brought something against you, I would know. I would say that, that doesn't pass the smell test because I know her. I know my wife really well. So if you came and told me something about her, I would go, that doesn't pass the smell test. Well, how do I know, Pastor, if it's another spirit? Spend time with God. Read God's word. Come to church. Spend time with God. And you'll hear something on TV. You'll hear somebody say something. You'll hear this or you'll hear that. Or you may even hear in your own mind say, that must be God. No, no, go. That does not pass the smell test. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Spend time with God. It'll strengthen your faith. And tough, strong faith will help you defeat tough times. Amen? Amen? And help you put down lying spirits. That's a lying spirit that told me that about Gary. It's a lying spirit that told me that about Patty. That's a lying spirit that told me about Leon. And that's a lying spirit that's trying to go talk through TV and tell me that God is wrong. You're a liar. God is the truth. Amen? Amen. Give God a hand clap. The last thing, the last thing that Jesus says is this, and if you aren't taking notes, the first thing we said is that never, not every need can be met by material things. The second thing we said is you can receive from the wrong spirit, so you got to be careful. Don't be worried. Just spend time with God. And thirdly, don't tempt God. Trust God. Don't tempt God. Trust God. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 9, there's a third temptation that uh, Satan is throwing at Satan. I mean, Satan is throwing at Jesus. And now let's read it. It says, And he brought him into Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from thence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Now watch what Jesus says. He said, Hey, Jesus... Prove to me, you know, a long time ago, do you guys, have you guys ever heard of the, the songs from the album Godspell? You remember that? I think they're redoing that. Boy, that's, that's pretty bad, some of that stuff. But, but my buddy and I would play it over and over and over. We thought we were being godly, but <laughs> some of that stuff is just ungodly. But it's talking about, one of the songs is, it's supposed to be Herod talking to Jesus when Jesus comes before him. And he said, so you're the Christ the great Jesus Christ. Prove to me that you are real. Walk across my swimming. Oh, it says, prove to me that you're no fool. Walk across my swimming pool. He tried to tempt Jesus to perform for him. We don't do that. We trust God. Amen. Satan comes to him and says, jump from the pinnacle of the temple, and the angels, the, it is written that the angels will make sure your foot doesn't even hit a stone. And Jesus looks at him and says, it is also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's interesting. Jesus could have just done it. He could have jumped. He knows you would have been okay, but he realized that Satan was trying to get him to 
play a game. We don't play games with God. We don't tempt God. In in Hebrew, I mean in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, it says, You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. That's what Jesus was uh, quoting. He was quoting the Old Testament. Most of what Jesus said were quotes from the Old Testament. And he says, in Deuteronomy, it's Moses that is saying this. And Moses says to the children of Israel, You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. Now let me give you a history of what Moses is talking about. And this is what Jesus uh, went to and, and recited. The Israelites have been in bondage for 450 years, some say for 30, 450 years, in Egypt. They've been slaves. They've been taught, taught terror. They've been uh, treated terribly. Families would be ripped apart. Kids could be taken from them. Egyptian could have sex with your wife. You could do nothing about it. They've been slaves in Egypt. And God sent Moses and delivered them out of Egypt. They came to the Red Sea. No way across the Red Sea. Pharaoh's coming at the back. And God parts the Red Sea, and the Israelites walk across. The Pharaoh and his group try to come after them. And as Pharaoh and his army gets in the middle of the Red Sea, God closes the Red Sea, and no longer is Pharaoh around. The Israelites are being led by God himself, and they're hungry. And God makes a thing called manna, angel food, come from heaven. And all they have to do in the morning is go out and pick up the manna, and they have food. They want some meat, so God brings quail across, and the quail falls right where they're at. And they just pick quail up, and they have meat to eat. This is what's been going on. God has been protecting them, delivering them, supplying for them. What's he been doing for you? What is it that God's done for you or for me? He brought us into his his family, out of the kingdom of darkness. He delivered us from Satan. He took us through the Red Sea and had it closed up so Satan can't defeat us. And he's there supplying for your daily needs as you have needs. And what has happened is the Israelites, after all these things that happened to them, they're there in the wilderness, and they start to complain to Moses. They go, hey, we're thirsty. Is God even here? Is God even with us? And Moses refers to that time and says, you've tempted God, the God who delivered you, the God that supplied for you, the God that's already been there for you, and yet you tempted him and acted like he wasn't around? My friend, don't tempt God. Trust God. Jesus is there, and they said, go to the pinnacle of the temple, Satan does, and and jump down. Jesus says, I don't have to do that. I don't have to tempt God. I trust him. He's with me. He's been with me since I've been born. He walked with me. Every time I did a healing, he was there for me. Every time I turned around, he was there. He was with me there in my childhood, protecting me. I don't need to tempt God and prove him. I know he's here. You know what? He's with you. If you and I ever got on our knees and said, God, prove to me that you're real. Walk across my swimming pool or do this for me. Please know this. He's already there. The way we get God to move in our life is to trust him, not tempt him. Is to believe in him. Not tell them to perform for us, but simply say, God, I know you love me, and I thank you for blessing me. Father, I receive healing in my body. I receive healing in my marriage. I receive healing with my kids. I receive healing in my mind, in my body, in my mind, in my body, in my mind, my spirit. I receive you, Father. I thank you that you're moving here. Father, I ask you to touch. I thank you, Father. For Father, I'm not saying this to tempt you. I'm saying this because I trust you. You're my God. You're my God. You delivered me. You delivered me from darkness. You brought me into your family. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I'm not trying to do a parlor game, as some would call it. I'm not trying to do anything to bring glory to me. I'm bringing glory to you. And everyone in this world, I want you to know I trust 
God. Amen. Amen. Don't tempt him. Trust him. The Israelites, God was around them all the time. He was a pillar of fire. He was a cloud. He was around them all the time, but they didn't have a relationship with him. He was available to them. He was very close to them, but they didn't have that love relationship. They didn't take time to spend it with him. They spent time griping. They spent time doing this and doing that. They didn't spend time because if they had, love would have strengthened their faith. That's why Jesus' faith said, I don't need to tempt them. I trust them. The Israelites said, we're, we're, we're going to tempt you. Don't you care about us? God said, I'm here all the time. All you have to do is have a relationship with me. Today, God's here. If, if you're a believer, just raise your hand. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, please raise your hand. Now, leave your hand up. I want to talk to you for a moment. See how close that hand is to you? God's closer. God's closer than your hand. In fact, like Oral Roberts used to say, I loved what he said. God is closer than the air in your nostrils. Have a relationship with him. Let the power of God and the love of God come on you. And let him meet all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, your spiritual needs, your physical needs, your soulish needs. Come to him and let him supply. And don't receive anything from any other spirit. Come to him and say, Father, I trust you. You brought me from darkness into the kingdom of light. I trust you, Father. If you trust him, just raise the other hand before him right now. Just let's worship him. Father, I thank you that you meet all of our needs. We want to have a relationship with you. And we thank you, Father God, that you've called us. You even showed us. You took Jesus out into the wilderness to be with you for 40 days. And then he was tempted. You showed us that a love affair with you is really important. You showed us that we should need to take time to be with you. And Father, today, we commit to you to spend time. We're going to have a love affair with our God. We're going to receive all of our needs from you. We're not going to listen to any other spirit. We're going to know what you really say because we're going to be spending time with you, Father. Father, we thank you. And we want you to know we're not tempting you. We're trusting you. I put my trust in you, Father. If you're in agreement, please say this. Heavenly Father, I'll receive from no other spirit, no other God, but you. I trust you, Father. I trust that you can meet all of my needs, my physical needs, my soulish needs, my emotional needs, my intellectual needs. And I believe you can meet the needs of my body, my spirit. I thank you, Father. I trust you. Give God a hand clap, please. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Um, if you're here today and you don't know for sure, if your eye, you walked out into the parking lot, a car hit you and you died. And you don't know that if you're, after you died and you opened your eyes, you're not sure where you'd be. Where you'd be hell? Would you be in heaven? You can know today. The Bible makes it very clear. The Bible says if you'll believe in Jesus Christ in your heart and confess him with your mouth, that God has raised him from the dead, it doesn't say maybe you'll be saved. It says you'll be saved. When we come to God, we, we come to him and say, we come to you in Jesus' name. We believe that you sent Jesus Christ because you love this. We believe he died on the cross for my sins, and I've made some sins. And I receive that forgiveness, and I'm in your family. I'm going to ask you, if you're here today, I'm going to ask you to pray this, whether you are a believer right now or if you're not a believer and you've listened to this and you say, you know, I want to know this God. I want to have a love affair with that God. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe that you are truly God and that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. And I confess today that he is my Lord and he is my Savior. Father, I plan on having a love relationship with you 
through all eternity. Father, I only want to receive from you. And Father, I trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God another hand clap if you would, please. Praise God, praise God, Kirk. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Why don't you go ahead and stand with me if you would, please. The band's going to come up and they're going to play as we leave this place today. Thank you for being here. I trust and pray that you were blessed. Uh, this lesson is always uh, put on the uh, a website that we have, so you can listen to it at home. If you have a friend or neighbor or somebody you want to have them listen to this, they can listen to it. It's free. Uh, you can just get on the website, listen to it. We want to bless people. Uh, so, so if you want to have somebody listen to this or you want to listen to it over and over and remind yourself, this is a, a way of listening to something like this reminds us and puts us in remembrance of having a relationship with God. Not a bad thing to listen to something over and over and over again to really get it. We want to bless you. It's free on our website. We want you to listen over and over and we thank you. God bless you. Heavenly Father, again, bless all those that are here. Let them go and have a great day with you. In Jesus' name, amen.